Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and I wanted to thank everybody first. This morning when I did a video, I had mentioned that my post-surgery recovery was going pretty rough and that I had some shortness of breath and I had swollen ankles this weekend, and I, I was going over that, and out of nowhere, I, I even had Mr. B call me and say that there was this doctor that messaged him and said that I needed to go straight to the hospital and all this type stuff. Well, um, I don't know which parts of the whole thing I explained, but anyway, I just wanted to tell you. So I called my doctor and after an ablation, they said that sometimes what happens is that especially if the ablation lasted for a while, that they use, I think I'm saying this right, they use saline when they've got you under and they're, and they're operating on you and all this. And that, that saline, if you're on, if they're working on you for a long period of time, sometimes there's a, there's too much of it. They said it can get in your in your system and get in your ankles and your lungs. And they said that the my reason that I've been uh, having a tough time sleeping because of the breathing, because some of that saline was in my lungs. I think that's the way they told me. So what they do is they give you water pills, and so that's what I'm going to go and pick up soon. But I do really appreciate. Some of the people that expressed concern, they were they were thinking that um, I was in a life-threatening situation, and they were telling me to go straight to the emergency room. But I've talked to my heart doctor, and, and we worked it out. So that's a good thing. Um, so it's time to do a second video. Um, this was I, Kieran Kelly. I haven't seen much out of him, but he's a very smart. I haven't seen much out of him lately, but he's a very smart guy. So anytime he tweets out things I, I tend to pay attention um he said this this is something that is so true what he's saying here and a lot of people it, it's it's good to go and revisit this especially when the sentiment is really bad which it, i've you know i've seen the sentiment out there's really bad right now but i like I, one of the things i love to do is go back and give things a perspective um he says the all-time high market cap was approximately 800 billion in late 2017 and early 2018. And we are today at approximately 230 billion. And he's right, it's uh, on Live Coin Watch 227. So we're at 230 billion people panic bought and sold and others made a killing. Obviously lots of people held. 2019 has seen a slight recovery, but I believe 2020 will be far more interesting. And he's probably right here. But what I wanted to point out to you is that in the depths of the 2018 bear market, this market got as low as about a hundred billion. You want to talk about depressing? That was when it was really bad, and everybody was like, "Whoa!" But I can tell you that I bought, I bought all the way through it, and I continue to buy, and I'm going to make another buy today of XRP. And there, when I went to Swell, I left there thinking the same thing I thought when I went and some, um, I, I left that place saying to myself, man, these people that are, that are running this show are the exact same people that I had in my mind when I studied them for the last shoot since 2013, all these people and what they're doing is exactly what I thought, what my gut has been telling me since 2013. And there are some monster players, that are showing up at these swell events that they're talking to or working with. And so it's not, you know, nothing, nothing has changed in terms of my thought pattern other than the fact that I'll probably be buying more on the dips when I can. Um, but he, he's making a very good point. We, the, the highest this market has ever been to is $800 billion. That's the highest it's ever been is somewhere in that range. And now we're at 230 billion. And when this happens, it happens fast because we went to 800 billion. That happened in the course of a very short period of time, like a month or two is when that happened. And I believe the next time that it happens, it might happen that fast or faster. And it's going to be much 
a much bigger tidal wave. Okay, um, let's move along here. This is um, every time that the sentiment gets really low, I, t I tell you this a lot, every time the sentiment gets really low, that's when you start seeing the FUD articles come out. They'll even recycle FUD articles, which is what they're doing here. This guy has retweeted this. Um, this is a, an old FUD article. There's no such thing as dormant funds. And this is from that Forbes lady, the contributor. This was all, you know, holes were shot in this back when this came out. But I wanted to show it to you again just to show you what David Schwartz, uh, his reply to this was today. Um, he says, if I recall, it was like someone arguing in 1930 that cars can't solve the horse poop problem because there's no horse poop problem because people would only let their horse poop somewhere if there's a benefit to the horse pooping because there because people aren't that stupid. <laughs> I think this is his way of saying that they are full of crap in this article, um, which I thought was great. Now, this is a this is an interesting tweet. I'm going to read the first part of it, but you should all go ahead and read this whole tweet. Time, they are changing and the masses are totally unaware. This is a clip from a, from a Zero Hedge article in their conclusion. It says, the world will change drastically between 2020 and 2024. Trump's second and last mandate coincides with Putin's last mandate as president of Russia. There may never be another coincidence like this for a long time, and both know that it is now or perhaps never. Together, they have to end NATO, SWIFT, and the European Union should crumble. Terrorism and anthropogenic uh, global warming will jump in the vortex and disappear with their creators. Trump will have to drain the swamp in the CIA and Pentagon. He has to nationalize the Federal Reserve. I'm not going to go any further into it. But this one part down here, I want to show you this. Um, they could put a final end to private banking and public affairs by refusing to pay a single penny of their debts and reset the world economy by shifting to national currencies produced by governments as private banks will fail like, fall like dominoes with no more Obama-like servant to bail them out at your expense. That is an interesting little write-up there. So go check that out. That's um, at DLT Game Changer. And then we got this from Binance US. I wanted to give you a little reminder. They said completing basic verification on Binance.us takes under five minutes and gets you zero fee trading for the first 30 days. And what I want to tell you is do this. This is one of the very positive things about the market being bad right now and not doing anything is because when the market is good, they will have backlog and you will not be able to do what they're talking about here. Verification, you, you want to get basic and then get the next level because verification is how you is what determines how much of your money you're going to be able to move once you, let's say you do make a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand dollars on Binance.us. If you can't move it, what have you accomplished? If you can't put it in your bank account and use it, what have you accomplished? Um, so, and you can't do that if you haven't been verified. Make sure that you've done all your verification. We talk about this a lot. Um, okay, there, there's three different things that came out on BitTrue. And before I tell you about them, I'm going to tell you, I've seen all these people on Twitter that saw, I, I, I met uh, BitTrue's CEO, Curious Wang. And uh, Mr. B and I talked, to, we had breakfast with the guy. Um, we didn't plan the breakfast. He just happened to be in the same room. Uh, nice guy. I am not a BitTru ambassador. Never have been. I'm not a BitTru ambassador. I don't make money from telling you about BitTru, period. And so I'm covering articles here because they looked interesting, okay, or some information here. The first one is this uh, from XRP for Lovers, um, and it says, Bitru coin market cap. Just wondering why Bitru liquidity is not showing up on the coin market cap website. And you can see they now have a section for liquidity on coin market cap. And they responded. They won't respond when you ask about XRP, but they'll respond about Bitru. Thanks so much for, for, for the inquiry. The liquidity data for market pairs will be launched in our next phase. We're working on a methodology for it. And then there's this. Bitru and CoinOne pioneer new exchange partnership model. 
Um, it says the cryptocurrency exchanges, Bitrue and CoinOne, have today announced a joint partnership in which both exchanges will work together to share technology and assist each other in global growth operations. This relationship offers a road for both exchanges to leverage each other's core system capabilities and integrate together for increased efficiencies. This Curious Wayne guy is very, a very aggressive businessman, and he, uh, he, he was over there in Singapore, and I think he went to Japan as well. So he's been over there cutting deals, working with people. This guy's a mover and a shaker. I, I was very impressed with, um, with the guy. I'll be honest with you. He's a very impressive guy. And then there was this, and I didn't know this from, from Bitrue. 7.52% of all XRP volume now goes through Bitrue Exchange. I didn't know that. Rising through the charts day by day, Bitrue and XRP go together like peanut butter and jelly. All right, and this I thought was interesting. The, we, I love co uh, covering Rico Suave, as I call him. This is Walid Benothman from uh, Ripple. I think he's one of their best salesmen. And he says, a most unexpected encounter, an enchanting place, and the first lady of France. Exceptional, generous, most agreeable. And he's and if I were her husband, I would keep her away from this guy. This guy's smooth as silk. <laughs> but no, he's a very good guy, very nice guy. But um, anyway, anyway, another Ripple employee out there. I guess he's traveling the world making sales. And I wonder what he's doing in France, by the way. Uh, and I tweeted this out today. Um, this was an article on Zero Hedge. Fed says Powell unexpectedly met with Trump Mnuchin on Monday morning as the president's invitation. At the president's invitation, Chair Powell met with the president and the treasure, treasury secretary. This is kind of creepy. Scary times is what I said. And, and the reason it's creepy, I'll, I'll show you that this is what Donald Trump said after the meeting. Just finished a very good and cordial meeting at the White House with Jay Powell and the Federal Reserve. Everything was discussed, including interest rates, negative interest, low inflation, easing, dollar strength, and its effect on manufacturing, trade with China, China, EU, and others. And then Cryptopolis made a really good point. This is more what I was thinking when I read that, that happened. The Fed has raised injections to $100 billion. Question, is it possible that they are losing control of the repo market because several large players are exp experiencing liquidity issues? Answer, yes. See, now this is what I think when I see a meeting that wasn't scheduled. Um, so, wow. Okay. Um, Eric Dadoon, who bought me some beer in Singapore, and I told him thank you, but I'll tell you thank you again, Eric. Uh, nice guy. Um, well, yeah, what did everyone expect China to do? For them, it's blockchain, utility use cases that improve infrastructure and state-backed CBDCs, not utopian freedom coins. Meanwhile, keep concentrating POW infrastructure within its borders. Let's see how that works out long term. And this is apparently China has gone is going public now, and they're saying cryptocurrencies, unregistered security, financial fraud, and illegal Ponzi scheme. So the the point to get out of this right here is to all of you out there that are the the anarchy types. That, oh, Bitcoin, we're gonna it's a revolution and all of this. This is the one hole. This is the one problem. It's what Brad Garlinghouse said. These countries are gonna bring out the tanks before they let some digital currency take over their financial system. It's not gonna happen. That's why that's why the digital asset investors saw the smart move to go with the guys who are creating an improvement on Bitcoin and then going straight to the regulators and have been doing so since 2012. And that would be Ripple. Okay, um, and then we have Bull Run Wonka who's been putting out the tweets. Small Chinese banks struggle to stay afloat. This is a growing trend as big tech disruptors like Ripple aggressively enter the space, adapt or die. The winners will be the first movers with the strongest team. So you got these banks are starting to show cracks, folks. And then I saw this and it was just worthy of reading to you. Rudy Havenstein, why does everyone ascribe pure motives to Paulson and Bernanke? Both always acted in their own best interest. They did nothing Jeff Skilling and Bernie Madoff wouldn't have in the same position. They acted in ways to ensure they'd always be wealthy, popular, 
Pluto Plutocracy Hall of Famers. Um, and anyway, I, I thought that was interesting because, yeah, he's right. It's exactly what they did. And then there was this. Um, I had never seen this. It's from back in December of 2017. This guy says, can anyone... Uh, can any one of Hayden, uh, Tiffany Hayden's fans tell me what scenario needs to happen for XRP to go to the moon? I just can't see what would make this happen. Not knocking it. I like it. Just wondering if anyone has logical scenarios where this plays out, considering that Ripple is not XRP. David Schwartz replied, XRP becomes dominant settlement currency. New corporate stockpile it for cheap, fast payments. And then there's a, a dialogue going here. And um, David Short says, XRP is XRP. Ripple sells at a discount with a lockup, not for transaction. We want a high price because that directly affects our revenue and value. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that XRP is XRP and that Ripple wants a high price because that directly affects their revenue and value. Thank you for listening.